Hi there everyone and welcome into this week's market update on the 18th of January. Don't forget that any advice contained within this presentation is general only, so it isn't tailored to your particular circumstances, and you need to decide for yourself if it's appropriate to you. Okay, so our market has closed a little bit flat today, once again, so uh, a little bit into the red at 74.06. You can see here, really, since we spoke last, the market hasn't done a whole lot. We've just stuck sideways in a range between 7,400 at around 7,487. Uh, so at this point of time, you can see here the uptrend uh, short term uptrend still intact and we're just hitting around sideways uh, there's you know all the moving averages are you know crossing over around that level and has been crossing over around this level for quite some time so there's no surprise that we're consolidating at 7400 right uh, everything really comes in at that level so we're watching closely if it breaks down we'll probably head back down to 73 uh, and then potentially 71 so the 73s were the 200 day moving averages there um, and yeah that'd be the probably the next level of support that we're looking at. Uh, 71.84 is really that major level from the long-term perspective. So you can see here the long-term trend since in the COVID, COVID is uh, ended, right? We're into a sideways phase and we have been in a sideways phase here really since roughly around August last year. We haven't been able to make any gains, okay, to, to, from the highs back then. Um, so really at this point, it's just one big channel. Okay, uh, between 71.84 and 76.27. A break of this channel really dictates what's going to happen next. If we break below on, on the lower end of the channel, we'll probably go for a bit of a correction. Okay, um, we do have a double top up here now. So, if, you know, if that does eventuate, I doubt it, but it could. If it does, then we're looking at, you know, probably a pullback even down near 6,800 would be on the cards. Okay, um, but nonetheless, if the trend holds and we keep edging through the, into an all-time high, then yeah, we should have a, a nice little rally into February. Uh, all right, so seasonally, uh, this is typical. Okay, uh, you get a bit of a Santa rally. It came late this year, uh, pulled back in Jan, a bit of a soft January, and then a rise late Jan into February. That coincides close to the US reporting season and our reporting season. So the U.S. reporting season did kick off on Friday night as the U.S. went into a public holiday. Okay, so it made it a little bit hard to read on, you know, uh, what's going to happen from here on the back of the first first night of reporting. Um, we did see some banks report badly. That saw the Dow down about 200 points on Friday. Uh, the tech stocks helped the situation, and that's why the Nasdaq was fairly flat. And you can see here the uh, the S&P 500 uh, held the trend, held a key level of support around 46.20 there, uh, and we're really looking for leads uh, tonight on what's going to happen next. Now the futures in the U.S. have come off late afternoon in our session. You got the Dow futures down at 100 now, and the S&P 500 down about 20 points. So so, you know, at this point of time, we'd expect the um, the S and P 500 tonight to open about 20 points lower. That could get worse as as the afternoon progresses, but we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, so, look at this point of time, you've got a lot of indexes at key levels, right? So, S and P 500, this is a fairly key level for them. If they break, that's going to break this upward momentum that we've seen all the way since when uh, the the COVID rally began. Okay, so that would end up being the, the first real lower trough that we've seen for a very, very long time. Uh, so look, that, that could be the start of a further pullback, guys. That is on the table, I'm doubtful, all right? But it is on the table, right? We've got lower, lower peak here. Uh, I could be talking very differently tomorrow if this breaks, okay? Uh, if this support level breaks in a meaningful way, then 4,500's on the table after that, the 200-day moving average. We haven't gone down to touch the 200, since not long after, so a, bit, a bit after that, that low of uh, COVID, really, right? The 200 significant guys in a trend. Um, I'm surprised we haven't tested it sooner. Uh, correct. I think we'll see plenty of corrections on this market this year. Uh, a move back to the 200-day moving average would be almost a 7% sort of correction move. Uh, even if that were to occur, I wouldn't be calling the end of the trend by any means. Um, I just think that we're going to see far more volatility this year than what we have in previous. Uh, across to the NASDAQ, okay, um, also an important one to be watching this year. So uh, the NASDAQ, uh, we saw a big tech sell-off early this year. It's back to the 200. It's holding the 200-day moving 
moving average. As I said, that's an important uh, moving average to be looking at from a long-term trend perspective. Uh, so they're the two levels. The, the one's at the 200, the other one's down at this support level that we've been holding since roughly August, July last year. So these are these are sort of the dynamics I'm looking at. You know, you've got XJO, which is very value-based. Um, you know, we're very, very value-based market in the top 200 stocks. Uh, so it tends to perform a little bit better than the NASDAQ in this interest rate environment, right? So we're talking increasing interest rates. I'll talk to that a little bit more in a, in a moment. Um, but in this environment where we're thinking interest rates are going to go up, a market like the XJO, which has got a lot of value stocks included, should perform better than the NASDAQ. Okay, the NASDAQ techie type stocks, discretionary com communication services, most of those stocks are very high growth. Um, there will be some value stocks amongst that, but most of them are high growth. People invest in them with an expectation of high growth. Okay, so that's one element of what's going on with the dynamic out there at the moment. The other part is uh, obviously reporting. Okay, so we're going to see more banks report tonight out of the US. We don't see much in the way of tech this week, but we will see Netflix on Thursday. Next week's where we start seeing the big, bigger sort of tech growth stock names coming through. All right, so that's really they're the two sort of things dictating movement at the moment. One is uh, sentiment around interest rates, and the other one is also the sentiment around reporting reporting and companies growth and company earnings and things like that. Okay, so watch out for this space over the coming weeks. Um, there's there's going to be a fair bit of movement, I believe. I think we're going to crack out of this sort of sideways phase in markets coming up into Feb, uh, and we'll probably get a, a bit of a run one way or the other. Expect volatility, guys. We might get a run both ways. A <laughs> big, big pullback with a big gain or vice versa. It's all on the table this year, guys. I don't expect that slow and steady uptrend. I, I expect a fair bit of volatility. Okay, so the other thing that really is affecting the mood of markets at the moment is the new Omicron variant. We're seeing the weekly cases worldwide continue to jump. Okay, so this is one of the websites I like to keep an eye on. Okay, this is showing us the weekly worldwide known cases of, of COVID. Okay, and you can see here over the last three weeks, this, this, these numbers are just spiking and spiking and spiking. Okay, so over the last four weeks, we've gone from something like 4 million cases a week, uh, and now we're sitting roughly at 20 million cases a week right so this new Omicron variant is, is very contagious and we can see that uh, the silver lining though is the death rate has not spiked along with these cases just yet if we continue to see that then this may not be bad news long term right long term this is actually good news for, for the whole this whole pandemic um, but what this is could be causing and what we could see worse and over the coming months is these supply chain problems okay so this is the big thing that omicron could cause us is a lot of supply chain problems and staffing issues so just to talk to that a little bit more um you know we haven't seen this as just an easy example of this is woolworths and coles at the moment if you go into the supermarkets some items aren't available including meat okay there's a lot of meat meat that uh is just not on the shelves right it, it, was, it was fairly bare on the weekend when i went through and it's not that we don't have the meat in australia we definitely have that product right it's just that there is staff away with covid they're obviously sick they have to isolate for a period of time therefore they're not working and once it goes through a manufacturing plant, it's going to put them behind. Okay, and this is what we're starting to see at the moment. Uh, so this could continue. Now, what worries me even more is actually China. And we're starting to see chi China lock down certain cities as they're trying to keep this Omicron variant under control. Um, there's also talks that people will only, uh, only people that can go to the Olympics will be people that are invited. There won't be any ticket sales, right? So there's things like that starting to play out. But China is one of the world's largest manufacturers and they do manufacture some very, very important things that we need to keep our economy going. Um, so that is the little bit of snippet that I want to keep an eye on here. Uh, not only is it going to cause problems in supply chain, but it could continue this rhetoric around inflation and interest rates, right? So at the moment, the Fed is talking about increasing interest rates to battle inflation. Now, the inflation is actually somewhat coming, well, mainly, I think, coming from the supply chain problems, okay? Um, so the Fed increasing interest rates at a time where the Omicron variant is running around rampant and causing more supply chain problems, is just going to dampen the demand, right? And you dampen demand, you're going to dampen the economy. So what we're going to have to see this year, if the Fed does increase interest rates, is a strong, strong US economy. If we don't see that strong, robust US economy, we need to see that through all the data, um, then 
the markets aren't going to like that. They will send a message. Okay, so this is all tied together, guys, because the more the supply chain has issues, the more the inflation uh, we might see, uh, therefore more pressure on the Fed to do something. And if they do something too much too quickly at the wrong time, the market will pull back. And not to say I'm not predicting any kind of big crash like we had through COVID. I'm not expecting a 50% correction or anything like that. But 10 to 15% corrections a few times this year is, is probably going to happen, is my view. Uh, do I think we're going to end the year higher than where we've begun? Yeah, we we'll probably will. I think that, that easily, um, you know, the markets could put on a 10% gain this year overall. Okay, um, we want to see some some a path out of Omicron. As we start seeing that path, I think the dynamic of what we're seeing right now will change. The things that we're talking about right now will change, especially as this supply chain issue fixes itself. The other big thing to be considering this year is where you want to be. And the dynamic right now is a move away from the growth type stocks and into value. Now, some value stocks are running a little bit hot now. So in the short term, you might start seeing a little bit of movement and a bit of switching to and fro and that sort of thing. But ultimately, as long as the rhetoric is interest rates are going up, and as long as you see bond yields continue to climb, which we're seeing that strongly through the weekend and today, you, you should tend to see growth uh, underperform value okay so at this point of time you know keep an eye on that space um, you know bond yields are a good indicator right now of market fear around growth if we start to continue to see push-ups of bond yields which is people selling bonds okay in this environment I don't say get out of the market um, because money will come out of bonds and should move towards equities right that's where you invest. You can't just blindly put your money anywhere anymore. And that's what it was kind of like coming out of COVID. You know, um, when, when we saw the 50% crash, you could almost put your money on anything and would have made some money, right? This year is going to be different. This year, there's going to be this move from value to growth, growth to value, back and forth, depending on the view on interest rates. The view on that right this moment, and it could change overnight, uh, is what's what's happening with the Fed, which is they're saying they could increase interest rates four times this year and start writing off their balance sheet. If any of that, if, as long as that rhetoric continues, um, we should see growth underperform value. But some growth stocks might perform very, very well coming into this reporting season. You've got to watch the reports as well. So I'm talking about a sort of dynamic, uh, a broad dynamic uh, uh, looking at the growth space. But there will be stocks in that space that will do well. But you've got to look at that reporting. We want to see stocks continue to beat and put out strong forward expectations of earnings. Okay, uh, we, we don't want to continue to see these uncertain forward guidance from these companies because of COVID, right? That, that sort of thing is really going to disrupt as well. So the last thing I'll probably bring up is we saw some China data come out. So uh, yesterday we saw GDP uh, came in at 4%, a little bit better than the 3.6% uh, expectations for the year on year, uh, but it was 4.9% the previous reading. So it's a significant drop, guys, okay? Um, we can blame a lot of that likely on COVID. Um, we can blame that on things uh, also the Olympics, right? So, you know, we've seen them pull back on on uh, steel production and things like that to curb pollution. Um, you know, so there's all the sort of dynamics starting to weaken things off, uh, not to mention their, their uh, property, residential property market uh, issues that they're experiencing at the moment. So uh, from a data point of view, that didn't look that great. Right. Um, what what saved them a little bit there was the industrial production was up. Okay, so which means they're still producing, but that could change with the current Omicron Omicron variant. So really, we need to be watching China very very closely over the coming months. That could be the one thing that actually could send markets lower. Believe it or not. Okay, um, you know that they make a big part of the supply chain, uh, and issues there could cause that problem to get a lot worse. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm saying we've got to watch this space for any hints, okay? Because what I'm doing this year is rather than just blindlessly going bullish, I am going bullish the market, um, but watching out for issues in the background that could cause corrections because I'm happy to close all my positions, uh, all my trading positions, not my investment long-term stuff, my trading positions overnight if I need to, 
right? Uh, if I start seeing some cracks, okay, China could be one of them. Uh, supply chain problems, the Fed could be another problem. Happy to jump out of, the, out of my trading positions going long and uh, and switch to short for a little bit and wait for the wait for the pullback um, uh, wait, wait for the pullback to finish, right? So two things we look at. One is obviously technical signals for this trend breakdowns, double tops, reversals, things like that. Uh, the other thing I mentioned before is bond yields. I continue to watch that. Uh, if they continue to jump in, a, in an out of control way, it means there's very strong selling happening in the bond market. That means fear of interest rates going up. That means fear overall. But what it also does mean is that people are expecting a strong economy. So there can be some positives in that too. And that's why I say uh, value, markets can still go up if interest rates are going up, but we need to see the right data to be backing that. Okay, so it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting year, guys. That's all I'm gonna say. All right, so look, that's probably the main factors I'm looking at to determine the market at the moment. Uh, U.S. reporting's key as well, and that kicks off in a much larger way tonight, and we'll be watching that through the next three weeks. Uh, then our reporting season kicks off early Feb. Okay, all right. So thanks for listening in. It was a bit of a long-winded video today. Uh, so have a great week. Thanks, and bye for now.